I'm Tim Hunkin, and this is my Under the Pier show amusement arcade on Southwold Pier. You can get yourself brainwashed, activate the cleansing process, lose weight, sample your DNA, frisk yourself, get a beach body. Get ready to work out. <laughs> Discover the truth about your character. <laughs> and even go on an all inclusive package holiday for a few minutes. These machines look really different, but this one's based on an old Sega Space Harrier. There's a normal arcade at Southwold Pier. And a couple of years ago, they started giving me their old machines to reinvent. Before then, I'd not really thought much about ordinary arcade machines, but taking them to bits got me interested, and I started to discover how they really work. I love all the splendid glittery arcades in Yarmouth with their rows of crane machines to tempt you inside. I always find them a bit frustrating, though. I never seem to get the prize. I don't really know why people bother with these machines, and yet there are hundreds of them on the front here. In the trade, crane machines are called redemption machines. In church, redemption involves being saved from hell. Here, I guess it's just the prize that's being redeemed. I'm on Southwold Pier now, and Matt's opening up one of these crane machines so I can get inside. They're really quite simple. Um, they're just some motors and switches that control the, the crane going up and down, and then an electromagnet that pulls the jaws in. Well, I can see the first thing I need to do to make it a bit easier is to make the jaws fully close, and I can do that with uh, this Allen key by just adjusting the thing down. It looks good. Now the jaws will close completely. Oh. Nearly. I obviously need to do something else to make it a bit easier. But in here, there's actually a control box that uh, controls the strength of the electromagnet, which if I put these on maximum, I should be able to guarantee a win. Every arcade has coin pusher machines. The coin slot magazine claims that pushers can provide up to 40% of some arcades' income. They're really quite simple inside. There's just uh, one motor that pushes all the um, trays out in turn. But they're slightly more subtle than they look at first sight. If I pull out this cover, you can see that as the coins are pushed forward, some of them fall into these hidden slots at the side. The coins that fall off the front come out the tray here, but the coins that go into the hidden slots go down these chutes and into the box at the bottom, the profits for the arcade. I've made my own slot machines occasionally for many years. The first ones were very simple electromechanical things, no more complicated than the cranes and pushers. But about 12 years ago, I started using little industrial computers called programmable logic controllers, made mainly for factory automation. They're wonderfully versatile and let me make machines that would have been impossible without them, like the Laboratoire Hunkin popcorn maker. Of course, electronics and computers have transformed real arcades completely. Uh, this uh, machine, made in the 40s, is completely mechanical, no electricity at all. Wonderfully satisfying noises it makes. You'll hear good news from a good-looking school teacher who'll be your downfall. Inside, there's actually a clockwork motor, um, and that uh, controls the... Uh, 
um, delay from when the reels to when the reels actually stop moving. This one's from the 1960s. This one's got uh, an electric motor to drive it around, but it's still quite uh, mechanical. Modern fruit machines are completely electronic, all controlled by computer. There's not a single one in the arcade in Southall that's still got a handle attached. All this elaborate lighting display it's all controlled by the computer inside. The reels are turned by stepper motors, which in turn are controlled very precisely by the computer. So the big difference is it's not at all random. The computer controls the odds precisely, and they can actually be adjusted using this row of little switches here inside the machine. The highest odds are 92% of the cash put in, so it's much more satisfying to just switch the machine into test mode. The most obvious use of computers is in the video games. These are two of my favourites, both on Southwold Pier. This is a brilliantly realistic flight simulator. It's surprisingly difficult, even though everything happens so slowly. The horses are completely unrealistic, just very funny. Despite gems like these, arcade video games are in trouble. They now struggle to keep up with home computer games. But the new technology also makes it possible for me to make my machines quite simply. All you need is an old telly, a 37 pound DVD player and a coin slot. Uh, I've connected a couple of wires to the remote control and wired it up to this switch. Uh, the switch fits on the back of the coin slot. All I have to do is to put in the coin and that starts the uh, video going. Board flight NB44 to Costa Bolente. Enjoy your flight. Of course, to control everything else on the ride, you also need one of these little computers. The coin slot starts this going at the same time as the video, and in theory, anyway, they stay in sync. The combination of physical movement and video produce a totally absorbing, powerful effect, and I'm still enjoying playing with it. I've just started a dog walking machine based on a treadmill out of a gym. In the video, obviously the dog will find other dogs' bottoms to sniff and do other disgusting things, but I haven't quite got the whole plot at the moment. Oh, no, it's terrible, Lucy. <laughs> oh, I think you might have to go to hospital. <laughs> I'm not going to make my fortune from this arcade, but I still love it. People obviously enjoy using the machine, so it's just been great for me to have the excuse to go on making them. Thank <laughs> you.